Hey guys, it's Renee. So it's been like way, way too long since I made a video. Like I honestly, it's been a couple weeks. Um, I haven't even been doing a lot of couponing videos, but whatever. It's life's been happening. It's been like super duper crazy at work. Um, I am not doing vlogmas. This is this is a lifestyle channel, but I'm not doing vlogmas. That's too much. Everyone knows I am in the military, so it's just kind of like. There isn't that much that I can show you guys. Um, so, I don't know. I'm thinking about doing like Vlogmas type weekends. Um, so, where you just follow me and the little guy around on the weekends and see what we do. Uh, I might do that. This is, is this the first? This will be the second weekend. So, I don't know. I don't know. But, what this video is about is... Uh, just my thoughts I have about a year left in the military. So, you know, staying in, getting out, I don't know. Um, so if you're interested, just keep watching. So with it being the holidays, guys, I did want to like get in front of the tree. This is our first time having a real tree and I am not feeling it. Like she like leaning, <laughs> like it's the most. So I'm just like, mm, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty, it smells good. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. So back to the video. Um, so I have about, I'm in my window. So about 18 months out, I want to say is when you can actively start processing to get out of the military or start thinking about reenlisting. Um, just there's so many different options that this has been like weighing on my brain, like crazy like I have talked to so many people about what I should do what is best for me um, taking into consideration my children myself where I want to be um, globally like if I want to stay here in the state that I'm in or go to a different state like there's so much to think about when you're thinking about getting out or staying in the military. So I just kind of wanted to give the pros and cons of both from my personal experience and what I have kind of gathered so far. So one is if you decide to get out of the military, you definitely have to have a plan. So there's this whole process and if you start telling people that you're thinking about getting out, they do try to keep you in. Like they take tricks out of their sleeve to try to keep you in the military. And I have actually talked to some people who were like, they had gotten out and it was kind of one of the worst decisions that they made. So um, someone who's in their window, you're just like, oh my God, I don't know. You know, it's so scary about, you know, if you should get out or not. But there was life before the military. Like I know some people join at like 18, but I didn't. I joined at 27. So I worked. Um, I was a manager for a long time. Like, I ran stores. Like, I was the boss. So, there was life before the military. But what I can say is, dude, you got to have a plan. Like, it has to be A, B, C, D, E. If that don't work, I'm going to do this A, B, C, D, E. Like, literally, you have to have about two, three different plans because there's so many different options. So, you can get out and use your GI Bill, which is free money. But... They only give you BAH, which is money towards your rent, and they pay for your school. So car payment, food, all of that other stuff. You have to have a plan for that. Like you, unless you're young and you go and live back home, you honestly can't just live off of your GI Bill. Or um, if you want to go from enlisted to officer, there's, um, there's West Point, which is kind of an academy for soldiers to go and finish their degree. You get your degree from that school and then you become an officer, like you commission. Um, there's green to gold for older soldiers, essentially, um, who are already working towards their degree to finish it the last two years. Um, there's a PA program if you wanna be a doctor. There's um, med school, like, dude, there's everything. But you have to think, if I am getting you know this school paid for from the military what am i giving back you're giving back time so if you do green to gold west point um any of the different scholarships that the military have you are giving back time so just know that yeah they're paying for your school you're getting a stipend but you owe them for six eight years whatever 
the amount is. But I mean, honestly, the military is not a bad gig, so I wouldn't be against doing that. So if you're like, you know what, I'm just completely done. Psh, I'm over the military. I say, think about it. Start thinking about it now. Like a lot of people who watch my YouTube are people who are going into the military. So it's like, okay, Renee, well, you talking to us all the time about getting in the military, but why are you thinking about getting out? So before you get into the military, you got to think, okay, what job do I want? Because essentially the job that you choose will make life after the military that much easier. So I tell everyone who reaches out to me, hey, look, pick a job that really is going to translate into the civilian sector. So it's easy to be like, oh, well, I want to do HR or whatever. Something easy because I don't want to deploy. You know, I don't want to have to, you know, do the crazy stuff. But at the end of the day, is that job really going to translate into the civilian world? Probably not. So I always say try to get into the medical field. I know it's not for everyone, but as a medic, we do kind of the nasty stuff, but there's so many different other jobs. There's PAD, which is like patient administration. There's LPN, there's dental tech, there's freaking lab tech. There is everything. So I always say study, 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 study for your ASVAB. Try to get as high of a score as you possibly can and try to do the medical field because honestly, like, like an x-ray tech, they do about a year. They actually get their degree while they're in training. Like you get your degree certificate, like you graduated. And then that translates to a really good hospital job as a civilian. So you just kind of got to kind of think, okay, I just want to do the, the military for a little bit, get this, you know, uh, certificate or training and then go about my business and my life. Okay, but make sure that the job that you choose is a job that's going to go well with the civilian world. Um, so you got to start thinking while you're about to get in the military, while you're in the military, definitely, 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 guys, I'm telling you, learn the ropes. Learn the ropes. Volunteer. Speak to people. I'm always like in officer's um, rooms, their offices. Because I want to be an officer. So I'm just like, okay, so how did you get how did you get there? How did you become an officer? Um, how can I get where you are? And they love it. They will have a conversation with you and tell you what they personally did, what insight they have, you know, what their friends did, how their friends got to where they are. Like they will have a conversation with you because they love to see junior soldiers as myself coming in and being proactive about their future so you get a lot of information by just going and talking to people who are in positions where you want to be so learning as much as possible volunteering for things i was doing taxes for a year but i got a like a super duper crazy high award for it so it's like yeah that wasn't my job but essentially when people look at my paper they're like dang you know this Specialist got an Archon, like, what's she doing? You know, so it it looks good. So the entire time that you're in, even though you're learning military stuff, learn as much as possible, period. Professional development, like, just talking to people to get, you know, first of all, get references. You know, if you put give someone a good impression, if you're talking to them about your future and what you want to be and what you want to do, and they know that you're not just here wasting time earning a paycheck, they will definitely remember you and give you references. And then insight on how you can get to where you want to be. It might not be Army, and, and that's the good thing. A lot of people that I talk to are not like, you have to stay in the Army. They're just like, you need to figure out what you want to do and do it. Period. Period. So there's that. And then if you want to stay in the military, because, you know, that's an option. Um, for me, it's like you either do four years or you do 20. Like, so that's why I'm putting so much emphasis on this right here. This, if I'm going to re-enlist or not, because I'm just like, I can't see doing eight years and then getting out. I might as well do 10. And then if you do 10, you might as well retire. So it's like four years of your life, which I'm right at three. So four years or 20. That's all I got. So 
if you decide to stay in, which the Army is a great gig, I say figure out your long-term plan because your long-term plan will honestly prepare you for what steps you need to do now. Like I can honestly say I've had some great NCOs along the way, but it's just like now it's just like, okay, I'm realizing that even though my superiors are great and they are teaching me a lot, it's like I really need to do things on my own now. I really need to make moves for myself, for my own future because they're, you know, they're taking care of me, but they're also doing what they need to do for their own career. So I need to make sure I'm able to do what I need to do for my own career. So I can say be proactive about, okay, so say you're enlisted, but you want to go officer. Okay, right now I, I am able to do all of that stuff, but say you're a private and you're not eligible for anything. Okay, but I came in knowing that I wanted to be an officer. I knew that enlisted was not for me. And a lot of people go in that way, but honestly, being proactive, a lot of people just become complacent and stay enlisted. And that, that that's not what I want to do. I don't want to be a sergeant major. I want to be a commander, you know? So just be proactive and make... One of the good things that someone gave me was a short-term, long-term goal, um, kind of like a worksheet, which shows, okay, this is where I am right now. And it was like a a display kind of, like kind of like a vision board. This is where I am. This is what I have. Five years, 10 years, 15. And it was A, B, and C. So it wasn't like... I'm just going to keep on this path and nothing bumpy is ever going to happen because, I mean, let's be real. We all have dreams and aspirations, but how many times is it like, okay, this isn't really working, so I don't, I'm going to have to do B, you know, because A not really working. So, it was A, B, and C. It was like, okay, I really, this is what I really want to do and I'm going to push towards this goal, but I need to have B and C just in case life happens, you know? So that I really took to heart and it's it's nice to see a visual, okay? This is where I am. This is my age. This is my children's age at each bullet point where I am. So I can know, okay, well, in five years, Andre will be in high school. So, you know, we have high school things to think about. Dylan will be in, you know, about to go to middle school. So, you know, that plays a part and it's you're able to see your entire family, um, even have your spouse on there. You know, you're able to see your entire family and what you guys are all doing to kind of keep yourself on track and keep yourself in alignment for where you want to be. And I can say, write it down. Like, honestly, people do not understand how serious it is to write things down. Like, if you write down, I will be... I will commission, you know, or I will finish my degree or I will do that. And you write it down and you see it and you start talking about it, then it's harder to let yourself down than anything. So that's why I talk about it all the time. People are like, you know, why are you always putting things out there in, in you know, the land? Um, especially people who doubt me. So people who doubt me actually watch my YouTube, which is weird, but it's like, that's just motivation. If I'm putting my goals and aspirations and dreams out there and I know that the people who dislike me and are doubting me and are hoping that I fall uh, watch it, then I'm like, okay, well, I know I have to prove them wrong. I have to prove myself right. I know that I have to work 10 times harder because not only the people who are rooting for me are watching me, but the people who are not rooting for me are watching me. So talk about your goals. Talk about what you want. Like, I see a lot of memes about like working in silence and stuff. I mean, that's cool. You don't want to tell everyone everything. I honestly say I keep the best parts of my life separate. Like people like my family doesn't even know like the best parts of my life. And it's funny, but you know, I really keep the best parts of my life really small <laughs> and really to myself because you have to keep some things to yourself. But it's like, if you're talking about it, you know that you're working on it. You know that you're making the steps and, and doing the things that you need to do to get there. So I definitely say talk about it, write it down, keep a journal. Um, I do love journaling because it's like I can see where I was and where I am. And I can go back and read my thoughts on where I was at that point in life. And 
how I got through the obstacles that may, you know, arise or whatever, <laughs> or whatever. So, I mean, I don't know. This video is kind of all over the place, but honestly, it's just about, I thought I was going to talk about like the military and getting in, getting out, deciding if you want to, but honestly, this can go for anything, guys. Like, just go after your dreams. Just write it down, talk about it, and go for it. Like, so many people out there are not given that advice that you can do anything, you can be anything. And because I come from a household where I was, it was, like, very different for me to talk to people or encounter people who weren't given that same motivation. And, you know, I'm here to tell you, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm 30 years old and I'm going to be a doctor. I don't care what nobody say. I don't know if I want to be a PA or a midwife right now, but that's the goal. And that's what I'm working towards. And joining the military was kind of just a check mark to help get the money for school and the means to work and go to school. But yeah, like that's the plan and that was the plan since I was little Renee. So to see little Renee living her dreams in big Renee, big grown 30 year old mommy Renee is nice. And it's nice because my children who are watching me work hard every day and go to school and grad have graduations and, and accomplishments, now they're like, dang, well, you know what? I can do that too. I can be whatever I want. I can be whatever my five-year-old dreams were because my <laughs> five-year-old dreams were to, to be a doctor, you know, to deliver babies and to actually to have had that experience already is, is phenomenal. And I talk about it all, all the time. I talk about it all the time that, you know, it, it kind of brings me to tears because when I was... Jeez, I can't even remember like a toddler, a small child, you know, I wanted to deliver babies like I wanted to do it. I was very fascinated with the entire process. And in middle school, I actually wrote a paper, which I think I still have it, a paper on the entire life cycle before birth. Like my, my teacher was like, OK, <laughs> but I did the research. I did the research in different countries like I was into it. So because I had children young and I had to work, you know, I had to kind of backtrack a little bit. And even when I look at my transcripts, I'm like, oh my gosh, Renee, like you really messed up a lot. But that's because I would go to school and then I would get into a relationship and then it wouldn't work. And then I would drop out of school and have to go back to work full time because then I was doing it on my own again. And that's why at this point in my life, I'm just like, okay, if you want to be here, you can be here, but I'm still going to do what I need to do for me because I'm not backtracking for anyone anymore. So you can get on board or, you know, or not. But at the end of the day, I know that this train got to keep going because I have goals that I want to reach. So for me to, as a paramedic or as a paramedic student, be able to stand there and catch a child being born is like, wow. And and not even just to watch the whole process and, and to be involved. It wasn't like, you know, you're off to the side and you're not doing, no, you're there. You got the gown on. Like, oh, there you go. Baby's coming. Catch it. And you're like, oh, okay. But it, was, it just brought me such joy because that was what I wanted to do my entire life. And it's like, I can't stop now. It, I still have so many more places I need to go. But this time, it's at a level where I'm able to do it. I'm able to work and do it and still provide for my children and live comfortably. And, and that's nice. I always say, you know, in your 20s is when you're grinding and you're making your mistakes, honestly. And in your 30s is when things just start to you know, level out. So I'm still grinding, but I'm leveling out and, you know, comfort is, is necessary right now. I've, I, I live the good life and I, you know, must maintain. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not too good, but it ain't, 
And it is lavish as all these YouTube people, please. I live the regular life. But to be able to actually work towards my goals comfortably is, is nice. So, I don't know where I went with this video. I don't know. But hopefully, you know, a lot of times when I just ramble and sit here and talk to you guys, I get, I receive emails that it really helps. So, <laughs> I hope this helps, um, guys. And thank you for watching. And if you are wondering about this face that is so beat right now. I mean, this thing is beat. Uh, Sephora last week had a, you know, if you are a Rouge or a VIB or an insider or whatever else they got, you got a certain amount of money off of a transaction. Well, I'm VIB Rouge. Like, that's my one thing. Um, and I decided to get the Hourglass Stick Foundation. And, I mean, it's beautiful. I got the color Walnut, guys. So this is just a little extra. I got the color Walnut. Um, it matches me perfectly. And it feels like nothing's on my face. Now, mind you, you can't put a little, little, I try to put like a line right here, a line right here. No, girl, put that, put it on your face. Put you some lines on your face. But honestly, I, it feels like I have nothing on my face. It's set really well. Um, I didn't set it with powder or anything. This highlight right here, this is Jaclyn Hill. Uh, whew, this is Jaclyn Hill, um, her duos. And I, I want to say this is Prosciutto Pop. Yeah, so the the um, Prosecco Pop, maybe? Yeah, it's that one. Whatever one that is. I have the blush on and the highlight. But that highlight, oh my word. I'm telling you, she will keep you sparkling, man. She will keep you sparkling. And then on my lips, um, I had a 100-point perk. One was from Bite and one was from Anastasia, a liquid lipstick. I just mixed them and put them on my lips. But yeah, that's it guys. Um, long video about me blabbing. So hopefully you watched it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. So, <laughs> bye.